So you always struck me as the Joe Rogan of uh, Asia. Oh wow! Uh, <laughs> wow, no, that's a compliment, man. Yeah, Thank you so, so much. Yeah. So, so the the guy who will actually bring out topics like that and just bring out to the public, and uh, that's interesting, because um, there's a lot of safe talk shows, mm. a lot of safe uh, topics, which okay. is very very boring, you know. Well, we are unadulterated, uncensored, and freaking raw, bro. Ooh. You know, I'm so excited today because I've got this crazy man in my studio. He's laughing right now, but I got this crazy dude. <laughs> and there's a reason why, because I've been wanting to cover this topic for a hell of a long time. And today, we're going to start doing that. And before we continue, I got to tell you, today is a two-parter. So you can catch part one today, and part two will be aired next week. Okay? What will we be talking about? I will tell you after these messages. And the message would be, Vades, Vades, bro. For those of you who are white people, black people, brown people who are not from India, I will tell you right now that these these are little Indian culinary delights and sponsored kindly by Gordon's Vades. And as usual, I gotta say thank you so much, VJ, for always making the trip down to my studio and making sure that my guests have a taste of the fluffiest. Crispest and the most chill. Look, look at this. The prawns are so chill, man. Look yeah, 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 correct. Until it goes down our gullet and down to our tummies, man. That's right. These are the best vades in the land, and they're from Gordon's Vades. Call Gordon's Vades right now. The WhatsApp, you can WhatsApp them, or you can actually just get them online at gordonvade.com. Thanks again, guys, and feel free, my friend. Yes. And let me tell you, let me tell you. Now we're down, we're down to my cam. I'm going to say this right now. The guy in my studio is an old friend, and I put out a plea online to ask anyone in Singapore whether or not they got things to say about ET, extraterrestrials, about UFOs, about, now they're calling it UAPs. And this guy reached out to me. And you know, for a fact, this guy knows his stuff when it comes to ufology. And you cannot find ufologists anywhere in Singapore. I hope one day someone's going to confer this guy in my studio. His name is Ignatius Bong. Welcome to the studio. Hello, everybody. Someone's going <coughs> to give you the yes. title of ufologist one yes. day, man. Yes, I would like to have that one day. Perhaps <laughs> uh, in a plug somewhere so I can put in another studio. Like <laughs> a yeah. plug of what? Uh, of a grey alien. Uh. Of a grey alien. <laughs> It's just because of you, because of you today, I made sure, I, what, I was contemplating, should I put on a tinfoil hat? Uh, no, no, but it's, it's too okay. hard uh, to yeah, make, Yeah, man. it's too hard to make, man. It's yeah. too hard to freaking yeah, make. Yeah, yeah, so, so I put on my Star Wars one instead. Yeah, Star Wars is okay, but I can only see the wars. The stars is different. Well, yeah, just yeah. because I don't want my peep to come down and cover my freaking face. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. thanks for coming around, man. Hey, thanks for coming around, man. Welcome, so today we're going to talk about we're going to talk about ET and everything ET and everything UFO, right? Yeah, yeah. And okay. uh, it's going to be a hell of a long sit down session. This um, one, <clears throat> it's quite uh, factual. There's a lot of uh, points, names, years, and um, you know it can get quite dry this topic. But at the same time, it is something that is very controversial, and uh, it's actually reserved a long time ago uh -huh. uh, when people are called nut cases. Okay, <laughs> on the fringe, uh, <laughs> people who are psychotic, you know, uh -huh. uh, then they will actually bother or get themselves involved in such a topic. But for me, it's basically uh, an interest. Right. Uh, it's like an entertainment thing, science fiction, right. but in a non-fiction way. Okay, yeah. but there must be something about this whole affair. That you really that make you a believer. You're a believer, right? Uh, yes, I do believe they do exist. Okay, yes, I do. Uh, right. <clears throat> I think basically. Um, I guess there's just too much evidence. There's too much evidence in the world mm -hmm. uh, to just write this off as something um, psychological or something that is uh, man-made. Right. So I think I think because of all this evidence that's happening around the world, uh -huh. and through the advent of the uh, growth of social media, right. uh, it's even growing even more. Right. So I think it is something uh, interesting to talk about. Uh -huh. uh, let's say in our context in Singapore, uh, 
if you ask the men in the street, they will just look at you and uh, just stare at you. Bro, which Singaporean <laughs> man in the street would give a flying fuck about flying sauces, man? Correct, that's right. Yeah, they would rather, uh, you know, wor- worry about finance, uh, how much money am I going to make <laughs> from my investment, <laughs> my treasury bills. Okay, that's Singapore. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they don't care about these things. So, yeah. so, I mean, when you mentioned this on your Facebook post, mm. I was uh, a bit surprised. Actually, I was a bit surprised because uh, in this part of the world, uh, which is in Asia, uh, we do not have such a topic discussed. Really? It's, from my knowledge, it's not discussed at all. There is no uh, radio talk show that talks about this. But perhaps maybe in a terrestrial uh, language, for example, maybe in Hong Kong, I know there's a group, uh, right. there's a UFO group. Right. Uh, they have their own discussions in uh, basically in Cantonese, I think. <laughs> <coughs> like the rest of us would bloody understand. Yes, correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the English, right? Yeah. Uh, right. So you always struck me as the Joe Rogan. Of uh, Asia. Oh wow! Ah. <laughs> wow, no, that's a compliment, man. Yeah, Thank you so, so much. Yeah, so so the the guy who will actually bring out topics like that and just bring out to the public, and uh, that's interesting, because um, there's a lot of safe talk shows, mm. a lot of safe uh, topics. Which okay. is very, very boring, you know? Well, we are unadulterated, uncensored, and freaking raw, bruh. Yeah. That's what <laughs> we plan to be, and that's what we hope to be able to continue to do. So now, the the fact is, is that it's true. I don't think, I don't think. The man in the street really gives a rats about what's happening in the sky. But then again, that being said, now something struck me. Maybe it's because the people in Asia don't talk about this topic of UFOs and ET and aliens and stuff simply because not much really happens in Asia. Am I right? Um, in Singapore, for example, how many... I've not heard of anyone having seen a UFO in our skies. Uh, I, sh- <coughs> I conquer because I saw one. No, get the fuck uh, out no, of here. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> I need a drink. Uh, <laughs> please have one. I can have a whiskey, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I was out uh, with my daughter. Uh, this was many years ago when she was young. Yeah. We were in a car uh-huh. and we were driving and we actually stopped at a traffic light uh-huh. uh, somewhere in Bedok South. No way. Yeah, boy, but those are <laughs> all right, man. The chakwe tail there, you know. So, so we stopped there, and then uh, she was the one that spotted it in the sky. It was something, uh, uh, I would say, round, oval shape. All right. Right. He said, hey, "Daddy, what's that, man?" I said, "Oh, that, uh. Oh, maybe there's something wrong with the windshield. No, 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 no. It's nothing to do with the wind windscreen. I mean, the shield. Uh, uh, it's up there in the sky. So I looked. It's true enough. There was something there, uh-huh. and uh, it was round. It was not moving. It was stationary. But I was driving, so I couldn't take out my handphone to actually video right. video the object. I mean, didn't you want to pull by the side of the road or something? I cannot because I got to make a right turn. <laughs> so there were two lanes already of cars <laughs> on my left. Well, there was yeah. a TP somewhere. Uh, TP, you know, police yeah, you, know you're, you're, you should be more frightened of TP <laughs> than the aliens <laughs> uh, in Singapore. So, <laughs> so then when I looked up, then it's true enough. And then uh, uh, I saw something was sort of an expulsion there was an expulsion of fire huh? or something red that's hot or some gaseous thing that was coming out of this object so the damn object was farting it was farting yeah but it was red like a fire fiery red coming out of it what time was this this was in the afternoon at in the daytime in the daytime yeah and you could see red yes something red something in the daytime in the daytime yeah so the thing was black and then it split into half I mean, it's not split in half, but the color changed halfway right. into a uh, half of it became red it was like spouting out some kind of a fire really yeah so when i saw that i knew what it was i knew it was not a not a drone because at that time uh-huh. i think uh that many years ago uh because i'm quite young now as you can see <laughs> uh, that many years ago drone was not like a, a very popular thing in singapore right yeah it was very controlled you know so yeah. like in singapore everything is controlled so drones worse this more control you can't just take a drone and, and fly anywhere and fly you all want over, all yeah. the place. so it was definitely not yeah. Okay. Uh, but if I were to see it today, maybe yes, I would expect maybe mm-hmm. I can say it's a drone. Mm-hmm. But it was not. So it was something uh, surprisingly out of this world. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I guess maybe I was just very lucky to to actually look up. Okay. So 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 now now uh, where am I going to go with this? Because I was <laughs> just saying that maybe the reason why this topic is not being taken up in Asia so much is because hardly people spot something in our skies. Yeah, I guess so, maybe. Right? Yeah. Um, but it is quite a sad thing because even if you don't spot it, but it's a phenomenon everywhere. It's a phenomenon that happens everywhere around the world. Yes. So that to me is still a bit, it's still not much of an excuse for people not to pick this kind of topics up. Mm-hmm. And uh, it should be spoken about, which is the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm taking interest in this. Because um, how can we be so arrogant to say that 
we are not that we are alone mm. that there's no other life out there mm-hmm. right um, and I mean but we read so many stories and there, and along with those who claim like you to have seen a craft in the sky whether it's close encounters now let's talk about a difference now close encounters of the f- third kind mm-hmm. is when you see a UFO um, yeah, I think <coughs> there's a, a few levels of it first yeah. second third form yeah correct I, yeah. I don't remember the second and the, the first and the second yeah but I think the third would be spotting a UFO with aliens mm-hmm. the fourth is being abducted yes correct right yeah the fourth kind but the first and second I can't really remember yeah I guess it's just a visual yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so if all these people that who have been deemed as you said you know as quacks in my language right mm-hmm. uh, then you have the skeptics and the skeptics always come up with something mm-hmm. right uh, going way back when uh, when this whole hullabaloo started man let's let's start let's get the story started right mm-hmm. um, if I remember pr- uh, correctly because you're the you, you are the ufologist in the, <laughs> during the show um, I remember that the very first time UFOs were making a frenzy well they were beginning to start becoming a frenzy was during World War Two, and the American pilots mm-hmm. called these guys Foo Fighters. Mm-hmm. I mean, not the band. <coughs> the band mm-hmm. named themselves yeah. after that, yeah. right? Um, and um, then after that, after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, there were more and more sightings in yes. the skies of the U.S. Yes, right. Yeah. Well, my wife always says to me, "Why do you believe these things?" I mean, because every time you hear a UFO story, it's in the fucking U.S. <laughs> <laughs> Why must it always be the U.S.? Correct, correct. Yeah. And you want to add on to 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 let's start with the U.S. Then <laughs> because if if you know all these things happen seem to happen more in the U.S. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. I guess maybe it could be one where um, in the United States it's a it's their mythology, it's the historical folklore that kind of thing where they see things in the sky. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but I guess so. Maybe they're just more um, open. Being Americans, they're very open in their media. They can mm-hmm. they can share more. They mm. talk more, mm. right? And then uh, the their news gets out faster. Mm. They're very open-minded. Mm-hmm. They can cover such topics. Mm-hmm. I guess so. You know, so I think it's a cultural thing. Yeah. Uh, in in Asia, uh, it's it's rare, but people do see these things from right. the longest time. Right. Uh, but then again, it's never mentioned because it's something that uh, the Straits Times and maybe today will never pick up. Uh, uh yes, they will never pick up. <laughs> Because Amongst a whole lot of other things <laughs> that they don't pick up. Yeah. Yes, because it's not newsworthy. <laughs> ah, right. So, right, as yeah. if they are reporting news, but yeah. never mind. Yeah, so so in the US, what happened was that uh, what you mentioned is true. The Foo mm-hmm. Fighters was there. Mm-hmm. And the uh, it was a cause of concern to the Americans mm-hmm. because the, they thought that the Germans had something in the air mm-hmm. that could defeat them militarily. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but they spotted these white lights that were following the planes. Right. So, the white balls of light. Right. So, they were not sure what it was. Uh-huh. So, um, after the war, slightly after the war ended, when they got <coughs> a, host, a host of Nazi scientists over to... Operation Paperclip. Paperclip, yes. Uh, they call it Operation Paperclip. Now, for those listeners out there who do not know what we're talking about... Go Google it. Yeah, go Google it because <laughs> the, to- the, the information is deep. So, you need to actually... Uh, we will just touch the surface of these topics like Paperclip and all that. Huh? So, mm. you, it's best to go in. Okay, just, give a, just to give the viewers and listeners a, a, a sum up for that. Right? I just mm. do you that favour and do them this favour. Operation Paperclip was right after uh, World War II. Uh, and this is, this is open knowledge now. Yeah, people, uh, uh, the German scientists that were deemed to be important for advancement for the United States were brought over by the CIA uh, to work for the uh, for the Americans. And uh, one of those projects that came to fruition actually was the space program, Mm -hmm. the NASA space program. Yeah, right. Uh, I can't remember his name though. Uh, Colonel Von Braun. Von Braun. Yes, Von Braun. Mm. He was the guy that was in charge of uh, NASA, wasn't he? Yeah, he was the one that designed and built the rockets that took men to the moon. These guys were bloody Nazis, (coughs) man. Yes, correct. But they were Nazis. Yeah, they were Nazis, man. Yeah. Mm. So it was covered up by the Americans, of course. You know, Mm. but they took the top brains from uh, from Germany. But the Soviets did that too. The Soviets did that too. Mm. Yes, correct. So it was a this distribution of the brains right during that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no wonder both of them landed up yeah. in space early that's right so yeah. when when the Americans sort of uh, spoke to these scientists uh-huh. because they were on the forefront with Hitler right. to develop uh, um, new prototype uh, weapons 
Right. Uh, the, like the, v, the V2 the, rockets. The V2 yeah. rockets. Right. That, yeah. So, right. so they, they, they found out that actually they were as puzzled as they were mm-hmm. themselves because they did not know. They thought it was American technology. Right. Uh, so you must understand at that time the world was very, uh, in terms of communication, was still. It's sent, not like today. It's no, not like today. There's no internet. Yeah. 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 So um, there was no exchange of information. So, right. so then they discovered, oh, wow, this is, uh, this is something new. Right. right, so uh, observations started to come in, right. and that's where the uh, I think it's a it's a joint uh, joint branch, or uh, uh, rather a split branch, but on the joint on the same topic. The American entertainment media right picked this up and started all the science fiction movies right that have mm. that thing the unexplained blah blah you know mm. from the 1940s as a as a pop culture right, and then the, on the other side, such things was actually happening right right so. Um, Uh, they were trying to just sort of uh, uh, record down, make a journal, right? And then the Americans, uh, of course, the military was involved straight away uh-huh. because they were very interested in this. Right. But uh, of course, it was all covered up. Mm-hmm. Okay, it was covered up because uh, the more information I have, if I can get some more information of this out of this, I can build better weapons right. in future. It's all about it's all about weaponry. Weaponry, correct. Okay. Yeah. So okay. so therefore they, they studied this and then they started uh, their own research things called Project Blue Book and then mm. they have many other mm-hmm. uh, people involved, scientists involved in this. So this Project Blue Book, mm-hmm. isn't that a, a kind of a sham? Um, the Project Blue Book is actually, uh, it was due to public demands. Uh, they were actually asking the military what was happening. Yeah. So they went to start this thing called uh, Project Blue Book. Right. Okay, the information again is very deep. So if I were to go right in, it becomes a very uh, boring lecture, <laughs> historical lecture. <laughs> but uh, for viewers who are very interested in this, like I mentioned, <coughs> do look up Pro- Project Blue Book. Yeah, but Project Blue Book is something that this Dr. Alan Hynek, right? Uh, he, that's w- right. He, he was a guy that they, they deemed to, be, to have placed him there as an expert, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And, um, and they were just trying to debunk instead of trying they're trying to disprove they're trying to debunk yeah uh, uh people who who claim to have seen uh ufos or claim to have, have encounters with aliens yes so they came up with all kinds of excuses that that was that was project blue book yes correct that was actually a cover yeah. because behind that they were actually doing the the research yeah yeah so the blue book was a public public uh face this for the public face okay. public face right right so they were debunked and right. they were just like you know because it was the end of the second world war right and it, everybody was on you know tension they were trying to build rebuild the economies and all that yeah so they find that uh no no way to scare the public so let's right. just have this and uh, we will debunk as much as possible okay they use things like swamp gas uh, which is ridiculous huh? mm. when you see something in the sky I I, I, I I mean I do fart but <laughs> my, my fart can't travel all the way up huh? or swamp gas from the fields you know the thing will float up I, I, I just ridiculous yeah. kind of uh, reasons yeah. they will give yeah. yeah but the people like it I mean they sort of absorbed it and that's where the story of nut cases came out oh you saw something you're a nut You know something, mm-hmm. like that. so they believed, and then they moved on with their own development as a country. But all these things got heightened because of uh, of of the incident in on July eighth, nineteen forty seven. Yes, that that is the very famous uh, one, uh, which is the crux of the modern day UFO thing. Yeah, uh, it's what uh, what what we call the Roswell incident. Yeah. Okay, so the Roswell incident was uh, a craft that sort of crashed mm-hmm. in New Mexico. Yeah. Um, the whole drama started when the, the press. Uh, release a statement mm-hmm. uh, rather the Roswell Army Airfield issued yeah. a statement to the press that they have captured a flying disc right and then they retracted that one day later yes yes right? yes. so that whole thing was uh, 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 started an international uproar it was like wow you know we caught something there you know okay and then um, they it faded from public attention uh-huh. okay but uh, what happened was that they had to give a reason and uh, one of the reasons they gave was uh, it was a crash weather balloon Yeah, uh, that was one of them. Yeah, but the issue <coughs> behind that was that there were all, again a lot of witnesses uh, who came out only much later uh, because they were threatened not to say anything mm-hmm. from what they saw. So farmers, uh, people like farmers, because this object crashed into an uh, open field. Uh, in, in, in this was this land belonged to a rancher. Yes, it, it? it belonged yeah. to a rancher. Correct. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so it belonged to a rancher, and uh, uh, what happened was the debris was everywhere. Uh-huh. So they were told not to speak about it. Right. Uh, until further down the road, uh, Stanton Friedman, mm. which is a ufologist, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, he he sort of uh, dig into the story and mm-hmm. then he reemerged again in the late seventies. Okay, this story was hidden, and then that was where he started this whole uh, uh, incident or uh, this case. How did Roswell? How is it linked to Area Fifty One? 
Okay, so basically what happened was, <coughs> according to eyewitness accounts and some of the military people who were retired, they brought the entire debris, including the bodies. They said they saw bodies there. Mm-hmm. Uh, they brought it of what aliens of aliens, yes. Mm-hmm. So they brought it. Uh, eventually, this whole thing was transported into this place called Area Fifty One, right? Which is basically has been denied by the U.S. government that right. it ever existed. So uh, they brought it there for uh, I think further research or further study of it, right? So um, f- Area Fifty One is actually a special place for the U.S. military to develop new uh, aircraft. Aircraft, correct. The Skunk Works is there. The Skunk Works is there. Yeah, Skunk yeah. Works. Because Skunk yeah. Works is the uh, subsidiary of Boeing, isn't it? Yes, correct. Yeah, yes. they are the ones that that build uh, uh, new. Uh, jet fighters and aircraft for yes, the correct. USAF, right. for yeah. the, yes. Air so, Force. Yeah. Mm, so what happened was that um, <coughs> the, U, the the US uh, sort of uh, uh, in this field, mm-hmm. there's this guy called uh, Philip James Corso. Philip James Corso. Okay. 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 He passed away already. He was an American Army officer. Uh-huh. Uh huh. He served in the United States Army. Right. Uh, from 1942 to 63. Right. And was a lieutenant colonel. Okay, so this is real. You can search. Ah, uh, he's he's there. Uh-huh. He wrote a book. He's called The Day After Roswell. Which right, it's very interesting. Right, uh, he's he he claims to be involved in the research of extraterrestrial technology mm-hmm. that he gathered from this craft, mm-hmm. and that led to many things that uh, we see today. One of them is fiber optics. Uh, the other one is lasers, integrated circuit chips, and all that. Huh. So it came from there. So really, yeah, correct, and even Kevlar, you know, Kevlar material, yeah, yeah, yeah it came from that. The because they went to reverse engineer some of these artifacts that they caught. No shit. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's very strange, you know, because um, Roswell uh, was in 1948, 47, 47, yeah, and recently in the mid 90s, there was Brazil's own version of Roswell. Yeah, correct, and it's at a place. In a small town in Brazil called Virginia, yeah, correct, right? Yes, right, Virginia, and there was a crash, mm-hmm. um, and uh, there were two alien beings um, that. Well, you can put, you put up the picture uh, now. Actually, there you go. You can take a look at that picture. That was that's an artist impression, you know, drawn out for three Brazilian girls at a time, mm-hmm. uh, who actually encountered this alien. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I'm I'm going to draw a little similarity here, just in case you didn't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure you would. You're the ufologist here. Um, at Roswell, but the debris was um, collected. The guy who spilled his guts, the Air Force officer who spilled his guts. To the press on the first day, as you said, mm-hmm. that we found a flying disc, right? That's crashed, mm-hmm. and then the uh, the the army denied it the next day, right? Um, he actually later on, uh, he actually showed people on that first day this uh, this silver piece that looks like a tin foil mm-hmm. that was really ultra light, mm-hmm. and you can fold it like they crumple it, and then you open it up, it splits out, sp- uh, it spreads itself out flat mm-hmm, yeah. all over again, yeah. Uh, it's it's a material that no one has ever seen before. Mm-hmm, it looks like a tin foil. Yeah. Now in Virginia, they found the same thing with the exact same habit, if I can use the word habit. Mm-hmm. And you crumple it, and you let it go, and it flattens out straight out again, mm-hmm, and right. it's ultra 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 light. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's it's really strange the coincidences as far as I'm concerned. And you know that 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 can we put up the alien again, please? Okay. Shucks, he looks like you, man. Oh, okay. Right. And now, uh, when you, <laughs> I'm only kidding. Don't get angry at me. <laughs> okay. Um, when you see you see that alien there, you see the way it's depicted with red eyes, and the skin is oily. They said, and it smells of ammonia. Mm. And people who came into close contact with this alien, mm-hmm. and including at a crash site, it's a very pungent smell of. Ammonia, like yeah. rotten eggs. Yes, and it stayed in their in their nostrils and in their system for months. They couldn't get rid of that smell. Yeah, and there was a cop, a Brazilian of police officer, who spotted one of the two aliens and caught him, mm-hmm. and actually subdued the alien, brought him to the hospital, carried him to carried him to a hospital. <laughs> yeah. That police officer died. Mm-hmm. Um, Apparently, he had severe infections all over his body, and he died. Mm-hmm. The one that survived, because his partner was there, refused to talk to anyone, mm-hmm. and he he became a recluse. He he just refused to talk to anyone about this shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So so it's the Virginia one, just like much like Roswell. I mean, the Brazilians covered it up 
<laughs> but the Americans got involved. Now I'm not going to talk so much about that yet because I, I know there's going to be a threat somewhere <laughs> where the the the, the um, where the American connection comes into play. Okay, so let's let's move on. Sorry, man. Just wanted to let you know that. Uh, yeah, that, that's interesting. Yeah, uh, you sort of uh, uh, sort of uh, sum up what this investigator did. His name is James Fox. Mm-hmm. So James Fox is uh, quite a very yeah yeah James, yeah, Fox, James yeah, Fox that's yeah. right that's yeah. right yeah he he's very balanced in his views so yeah. when he makes a documentary about such things uh, people sit up and listen yeah it's not those uh like sometimes you get those nut cases ah uh, now nah, I use the term again so <laughs> sometimes <laughs> do you do have people in this play in this zone that are really nuts like, you know yeah, they're, they're yeah. really uh, out out there yeah. but this guy is good because he does his due research and then yeah so basically when you balanced. look at stories for for these sort of things you're actually looking at the person who's actually delivering it yes yeah, very important. You got to see who is the person. Credibility, cre- the credibility of the researcher. Right. Yes. You. You. I mean, there are many books written about this. Right. There are many TV programs. Right. But some of them are just out for entertainment. Right. But right. if that's the case, it, since you were talking about credibility of people, mm-hmm. witnesses, and all mm-hmm. that, right? What do you think about uh, what's his name now, Greer? Oh, Stephen Greer is a uh, is one of those polarizing forces right. in the in the U- UFO field. Yeah. Do you, um, do you think he's credible? Um, well, I guess uh, he has an agenda. Uh-huh. Okay, his agenda is uh, what he wants. Is they call it the Close Encounter Five, CE Five, where he has a uh, a group of people meditating mm. and saying hello to aliens in an open field space somewhere, right. and then they will just appear. And they are not uh, basically they are friendly. They will say hi. I come to advise mankind uh, about your uh, Earth uh, global warming, blah blah blah. Uh-huh. You know that kind of thing. So a very peaceful thing. That is his agenda. Right. Uh, there is another school of. Uh, there are basically many schools in the UFO field. Right. So uh, if you really go down this rabbit rabbit hole, uh-huh. it's very hard to come out <laughs> because really everybody is fighting with one one another. Right. There's there's a lot of uh, interest groups. Uh, I would say. Right. Right. But uh, if we get into this. Um, Feel yeah. which I'll bring back just uh, a slight uh, no no history. Don't let me deviate <coughs> deviate yeah, yeah. stuff for you. Yeah, man. no no problem. Yeah. So we will go into the uh, basically the different aspects of this field for the listeners who who are who are now somewhere into this field. Right. To avoid confusion, I, I will just maybe go through some of these uh, uh, areas for this UFO uh, topic. Right. Okay. Now one we have just mentioned is the Roswell incident. We right. call it the the saucer crash. Right. So the saucer crash again has the many many uh, sort of topics to cover. Mm-hmm. But uh, one more we, which we also need to, uh, which I will touch upon, mm-hmm. is basically things like uh, alien abduction. Mm-hmm. Okay, that means uh, unlawful kidnapping of people when they're asleep or when they're on the roads. Okay, I'll talk about that later. Right. And then we also talk about, uh, I guess, maybe the important, uh, famous cases which we have uh, not seen, not mm-hmm. not mentioned. Mm-hmm. For example, the Rendlesham Forest incident. Rendlesham Forest. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's the one in the UK. That's the one in the UK. Okay. Okay, the Belgian UFO wave. Mm. The Bet- Betty and Barney Hill case, mm. which is very, uh, uh, very, very big. Mm. Uh, the Japan Airlines flight 1628. Yeah. That one also is a very heavy uh, a flight that saw something there. Yeah. Okay, and then of course, the, the Tic Tac UFOs. Yeah. And uh, very credible video evidence from uh, Brazil. By Jamie Mawson, okay, Mawson, huh? right? And of course, along this way, we have many other topics that are subtopics of the UFO thing. Right. You have Bob Lazar and Area Fifty One. Right. Uh, Bob Lazar is an engineer right. who claims to have worked on this craft. Okay. You have Linda H- Moulton Howe. Yeah. Uh, who's an expert on cattle mutilations? Uh-huh. Uh She is now into the secret space program very deeply. Uh-huh. Secret space program is another topic <laughs> which is big because we are talking about. Mankind having the technology and are now cooperating with aliens without the knowledge of other mankind. No fucking way. <laughs> yeah, it's that bad now. Huh? It just goes that that rabbit hill. Then you got the Skinwalker Ranch, uh-huh. and you have the, of course, the Dulce base. That means they are bases in America. Right. And then you have uh, Stephen Greer, CE5, uh-huh. and his uh, disclosure. Right. So uh, starting from the. Uh, Topic where we started today. Yeah, uh, you mentioned a lot of this happens in the US. Right. Yeah. As as all I've mentioned, everything is all from the US, lah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> One or two from from United Kingdom. Yeah, Belgium. And Sometimes uh, I I do think mm-hmm. I mean to be very objective. Why is this only in the US? What about the the rest of the world? Right. Why Why don't we hear? Why don't we hear this in, for example, other countries, like uh, like for example Malaysia. Our nearest nearest country, or somewhere, let's say, uh, we we don't hear this in, uh, I mean, we we don't hear this in maybe like uh, Laos, Cambodia, Indonesia, Indonesia, and things mm. like that, huh? mm-hmm. But 
there there are cases like this which is uh, not really there, there are no people who really follow up on this because like I mentioned in this part of the world ufology is is very strange it's right. it's non existent right uh, there is no branch or uh, a group of people that study this and talk about yeah, it yeah people like to talk about hantus and ghosts uh, yes, and, correct. and the, the possessions topic, and yeah, stuff yeah correct so it's a cultural thing in yeah. this part of Asia they're more more into ghosts yeah you know like, yeah. like stuff too much of that going on yeah now. in America I think it's different for them this is their ghost story right yeah the, the UFO <laughs> thing huh? yeah. the Bigfoot so these two are very big uh, for, for them so they collate the catalog then they will speak about it right yeah so as I mentioned earlier uh-huh. uh, Uh, moving on, this this sightings of these things has uh, sort of provoked many groups to actually emerge in a, in America. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, the alien alien abduction was mm-hmm. another big one that came up after the Roswell discussions. Okay, after Roswell, uh, many people started to see crafts in in the sky. So it was like okay, in the media like CNN, they were just cover. Okay, we saw something here. They saw something there mm-hmm. and all that. Until it was very quiet until uh, it came, I mean, some in the late 80s or early 90s, mm-hmm. this thing called alien abduction came about. Mm-hmm. Right? So, it moved on from the 40s of the crash of the UFO mm-hmm. and then into the alien abduction. Mm-hmm. So, then, uh, this person by the name of Whitley Strieber, he wrote a book. Mm-hmm. Okay? It's called Communion. The book Communion had a cover. On the cover is what we see today or now know as the grey alien. Right, the big eyes, ah, uh, bug eyes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, it became a very big hit in in America. Okay, a New York Times bestseller, and it was placed in all the bookshops around the world. Mm-hmm. Okay, this alien face and many of the copies, like maybe they have a hundred and fifty copies put up together, the bestseller. Mm-hmm. Now this triggered something in American culture. Right. Uh, a lot of people when they saw that face, they started waking up. They started getting frightened. Yeah, weird, isn't it? Yeah, they started getting uh, cold sweat. Like, right. I've seen this before, right. but I do not know what it is. Right. right. So then he started to get a lot of, uh, what do you call it, letters uh-huh. from uh, about his book. Uh-huh. It was not like, wow, you're a great author, fantastic, I love your story. It was like, this happened to me also. Oh, yeah, so, so he, there were more people coming out yes, of the woodwork. Yes, because in this communion, uh, this book was about a non-fiction account mm-hmm. of his uh, alleged uh, experiences mm-hmm. with non-human entities. Okay, he calls them non-human. He don't call them aliens. He has never called them aliens until today. So uh, he reached out, and uh, uh, what happened was uh, it sort of pulled all these uh, different topics or incidences together. Mm-hmm. So so much so that uh, a lot of people started to see uh, uh, wanted him to come up with a solution, mm-hmm. right? But then. Um, Uh, they actually went finally to see a psychiatrist because it was suggested not by him mm-hmm. but, but a, few, a few people that maybe we should do something called a hypnotic regression mm-hmm. so you can recall what was the trauma right. when you see this face right. so they thought maybe it's just a childhood trauma right. but when they go through that then they realize that uh, something had happened in their childhood or something that happened yesterday or last week or last month right, regression, right? Yeah. a regression mm-hmm. now in regression in uh, in a scientific field Uh, mm-hmm. With psychologists, uh, regression is used lightly. It's not heavily used. Mm-hmm. It's basically to dig out trauma. Right. Right. So right. they put it in an altered state right. where you are uh, ask certain questions, mm-hmm. but you are supposed to just uh, share. Yes. You know, right. And yeah. and you are sharing in a safe space. Right. Uh, on a couch, and the psychiatrist will tell you say that okay, we are in a safe space. Right. You can share whatever you want, mm-hmm. but you are in a very safe space. Mm-hmm. So they release this information out. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the stories came out. And this where came the next branch of ufology. It's called the U- alien abduction. Right. Okay. So um, it's so much so that an American psychiatrist, uh, a professor, head of department of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. Right. Um, he won a Pulitzer, Pulitzer Prize as well. His name was jo- John Mack. Okay. John Edward Mack. Okay. He came to the picture. Right. He says uh, maybe he was trying. He was trying to start a new branch of uh, psychiatry to study this victims uh, so mm-hmm. so that he could actually have his own branch with his name on it uh. mm-hmm. but he actually went to to study them and uh, it was about uh, 10 years they take it plus uh. so right. he studied about uh, figure about 200 men and women okay. together to uh, to see what was going on and he realized one thing all of them went through trauma Okay, that is a fact that means it was not made up by uh, subconscious or some design or storytelling mm-hmm. or publicity stunt Right, mm-hmm. so they actually went through some trauma, and the trauma is real. This thing actually happened to them, according to his professional. Uh, well, like being uh, abducted, uh, uh, being abducted, being abducted, something did happen to them, and all of them went through the same trauma. Every story was the same. Right. So, so to him, it was uh, it was very puzzling okay. because these victims 
will not meet each each other uh-huh. they will be a very super low profile because it will affect their careers mm-hmm. uh, people will think that they're crazy mm-hmm. so that uh, I won't employ you anymore so for them they will just stay a very low profile but they will see him privately as a patient so then um, um, he thought it was a brain abnormality right okay right. but uh, all their brains were functioning pop- properly okay as normal as possible so then something did happen um, he He couldn't give any. Uh, uh, he he couldn't give any sort of a, like a diagnosis. What if what so? I just put it as a mystery. Okay. Yeah. So he he left it as it is. Right. Okay. But because of his intervention and because of his uh, his reputation, and he came to this field, it built a lot of credibility. But what I'm trying to understand mm. here is that if he if if he really you know um, tested on two hundred persons. Right, is John Edward Mack, mm. and discovered that these two hundred people, separately and severally, had abduction experiences. They're all abductees. Mm-hmm. Then, is I want to understand how did he pick these two hundred people? Oh, okay. Uh, that that I, I do not have the facts. This, but that's <laughs> the thing you see. Because yeah. right now, what I'm thinking, I'm the skeptic in me mm. is thinking that did you did he go out there to find? 200 people who claim to have been abducted or they're just 200 random people mm-hmm. because the scary bit is if it were the latter and it were, they were 200 random people mm-hmm. yeah. and he tested them and they all have been well you know seem to have gone through a traumatic ab- abduction experience then he could just be just about any one of the damn street that could have yeah, been abducted right, once right. yes. at least once in their life right correct, correct yeah i mean i mean that would be a scary thought yeah correct yeah yeah you brought a good point because this i guess were his patients that went to see him yeah was so all this fucking he must be an alien then man no, i think he was making the money man all right <laughs> yeah so he together with another person uh, in, in uf- ufology is called bud hopkins b u d d Hopkins. So, Bud Hopkins was another guy right. who actually uh, did this kind of regression, and the stories came out, and it's very interesting. That's why I say when I follow this topic, it's sometimes a bit of science. So you, well, you know, no, but but we talk about regression, man. In case you don't know, in case any one of you don't know, actually, mm. I'm a master certified clinical hypnotherapist. Oh, really? So I understand uh, regression. Okay, I have had done. I've had. Hypnotize people. Oh, cool! Right, uh, and no, I have. I, I I'm actually certified okay. years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freaking believe it or not, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, and yeah. So you know, um, I can understand. You know, people, they, they, you have to dig deep, mm-hmm. and people bury those memories deep down inside. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, but then again, then again. Uh, I I wouldn't think that uh, it would be for everyone, you know. Yeah, uh, that's my take. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. that's my that, take. That's true because yeah. regression you can actually suggest yes, an incident, yeah. and then they can relate. Yeah, yeah. So most of the people, what they do is yeah. that uh, when when we say abduction mm. to the man in the street, oh, he got kidnapped, ma. Then they ask for money. Yeah. No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. No, man, dude. So, so it's you a medical abduction. They will take. They're taken on. And then half. they stick a probe up your ass. Yeah, yeah, really. They stick a probe, or they 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 try to find some kind of a uh, uh, something about the human body. Uh-huh. Right, so you are basically naked on a cold table, and this is where the grey aliens come, right? And they will touch. And, uh, Shit, dude! The way you're saying this is as if you've been through it. No, man, this is what I see on TV, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. whether or not, yeah, whether or not these re- things really, really do occur, right? Yeah, that's right. So it's a very American thing because yeah. sometimes you 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 think to yourself, oh my goodness, uh. Really, yeah, uh-huh. you know, what's such a thing? I mean, it's interesting. When yeah, you, well, yeah. When, when you first read of it or when you yeah. first see it, hear of this, it's like it's very frightening. Yeah. It's basically like a rape incident, you know. Yeah. Where they're describing it by rape by aliens. Intrusive, aliens. yeah. Uh, intrusive, and then they talk about alien child hybrid. <laughs> uh, because their planet is dying, so you need to put in some more of the human DNA because they cannot absorb food. They can only absorb food through the skin. Okay, this one gets a bit wayward. It really destroys the topic. I mean, personally, I feel yeah, it yeah. destroys the whole topic. Yeah, because it is based on no evidence. Yeah, and they will just say and they will support each other. This is very typical of, uh, by the way, uh, American media. Yeah, American I mean, media supports one another. Do a Tucker Carlson, man. Yeah. Yes, guys. Yeah. <laughs> 
they support one another. Yeah. So so they, they, they will just be in their own world. Yeah. They will report on something, uh-huh. and the other company will report on something else, and then they will just feed each other. Yeah. So this is a situation. Sensationalizing of, things. Sensationalizing, yeah. yes. Yeah, right? yeah. To get more more viewership. Yeah, yeah. So you have com- the networks, yeah. Yeah, networks, right? Mm. So you have uh, companies like, for example, uh, uh, one very important, one big topic is they call the ancient aliens. Oh, uh, this one about aliens again. Uh, Ancient oh, aliens on the History Channel. History Channel, correct. Yeah. yeah. So they have about nineteen seasons. Oh, my goodness, that's yeah. big for a documentary. Yeah. So hundred almost two hundred episodes. Yeah, but you know, you know, actually, not that you talking about that show. Mm. I mean, I mean, there's some some good people there. I know that's the Stanton guy, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. He is quite pragmatic, actually. Yeah. Uh, that's how I feel. Yeah. Uh, But the rest of these guys, like the other guy with the funny hair, man. yeah, correct, correct. I mean, you look at them. You what you just, what you want is that you want to see credibility. Yes, correct. And yeah. sometimes they're so over the top. Yes, you know, correct. That, yeah, it You're just right. it yeah. gets weird, man. Yeah. So for listeners yeah. and viewers out here who are wondering what is ancient aliens, it's not an alien that's old or carrying a walking stick. <laughs> okay, ancient aliens basically is a is another offset of u- ufology. We have the crash people. Yeah. The Roswell crash. You got the abduction people, uh-huh. and then now you have the ancient alien people. Yeah, that means the people who says that mankind uh, came about to this earth mm-hmm. uh, through alien intervention mm-hmm. by uh, sort of uh, they developed us, mm-hmm. and um, one of the monuments they developed was the teaching or the development of the ancient pyramids. Mm-hmm. So if I if I go into that, it's another deep, very big rabbit hole. Who built the pyramids? Who built the ancient structures in South America? Now it's very true. These structures were very difficult to build at that time. Yeah. Because mankind was like, uh, you know, just a hunter gatherers, at most, ah, uh, hunter gatherers. So they don't have this technology to position the rock, like the uh, pyramid, very close to the true north, and gets all the shape and everything. Yeah, but it's, it's, but but that's something that we we should not ignore uh, mm. in in our topic because. Yeah. Because look, man, Gu- Gubeki, Gubekli Tepe, yes, in in uh in Turkey, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, one thing that I know for a fact that for archaeologists, when they go out there and they find anything, right, they would yes. dig the ground yeah. and find something from antiquity. As long as there are right angles, it's made by man. But damn, the right angles at Gubekli Tepe is insane. Um, and I really don't understand how the ancients could have done things that way. Yes, correct. Right. Yeah. And I also believe that historically we've been had where t- uh, the civilization's history t- timeline is concerned. Yes. I think humankind is far older. Yes, correct. Than what it seems to be. Correct. Uh, there were a few uh, um, end. End of world, what's the word for it? End existence events. What's what's the word for it? Okay. Um. Be- um end of the world. Okay. The yeah. End end existence of the world. That yeah. Means, uh, the world actually ended through a flood, through an ice age. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the ice age. The, the the first, of course, the the dinosaurs get yeah, hit. Correct. In Mexico. Yeah. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. with the, by the asteroid, mm-hmm. and then there was there were human civilizations at yes. a time when the continents <coughs> apparently mm-hmm. has yet to uh, basically one big continent called Pangaea. Yeah. They've yet to split, right? Yes. And that human the the human race there was already a human race. Correct. You know. And advance mm-hmm. that's already you know living, yeah. and 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 on Earth. Yeah. Then they were hit by another cataclysmic event. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. This is basically um, something more which I I mean in my interest in the UFO uh, mm-hmm. thing which I uh, tend to lean more on because mm-hmm. it's something historical, it's something factual. Mm-hmm. You can see there are stone structures and all that, which yeah. I find interesting. Megaliths. Megaliths. Uh, yeah. Megaliths and all that. So. Um, It's a very big topic, but it's a very interesting topic. Yeah. Now, ancient aliens from the History Channel bring this out to the public. Right. Right. But sometimes they do it a bit dramatic. Everything without evidence. They say yes, and it must be. Therefore, we understand it mm-hmm. must be. You know that kind of statements they make, which is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But they do bring out these points. So I would like for viewers and listeners who are interested in this, like the pyramid structures and all that, uh, to go to one author and only one. Uh, his name is Graham Hancock. It, oh uh, yeah! Uh, now, now Graham right. Hancock has a series on Netflix now. Yes, do catch it before it goes away. Yeah, where he actually talks about this in a eight parter uh, episode. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting because yeah. this guy is a very balanced. Uh, 
uh, he's a journalist. Man, I, I wish I could have him on this show, man. Yeah, correct. Yeah, you got to pay a lot, now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> give him a damn three, Joe Rogan had him yeah three three truckloads of vade yeah man I vade tell brought you. to you by yeah I'll give him three truckloads of vade vade yes yeah. right yeah. VJ's not going to be very happy about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah. so that, that's a very interesting uh, area because uh, uh, if you really do your but you know this guy Graham Hancock yeah I think he got shunted by the archaeo- uh, the archaeology uh, 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 fraternity you know yes very heavily yeah because he's uh, thinking out of the box and yeah. um, his theories make sense actually right but um, of course uh, to historians right mm-hmm. it's like uh, hitting their rice bowl why mm-hmm. are you uh, contradicting what we have known for yeah but then years? again why should everyone just you know take mainstream archaeology you know at face value mm. correct correct yeah I mean n- new digs will come new oh, new oh, digs <laughs> new digs will come yeah <laughs> 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 Dig, digs, new digs will come, <laughs> right? New archaeological, archaeological digs, digs will and come. finds will come. Yes, yeah. with with greater evidence. So I was just wondering what digs did they find? Yeah, boy. Yeah, oh, killer. Yeah, right. The so, power of English. <laughs> <laughs> the power of enunciation of yeah, English boy. language, man. Yeah. Okay, so um, I I I, I kind of agree with. Uh, w- I mean, I watched the show. Mm. Right and really, guys, you got to go catch that one on Netflix before it's out, yeah. before it's done, actually, and mm. taken off. Yeah. Um. What's it called now? Uh. Wow. Well, let me check. Yeah. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. While Ignatius is checking, um, you got to watch that show because uh, this guy Graham Hancock, the facts that he he comes up with with the data and all that. I mean, my goodness, mind blowing, man. You you just cannot say no. To the things he's saying Yeah the, sh- the title of the show Is called Ancient Apocalypse That's it yeah. That's the one um, He doesn't talk about aliens he, he says that mankind There was an ice age That killed off This group of people mm-hmm. uh, In history Sometimes In the old sonnets Of the very old Ancient Greek textbooks Whatever Right They call this place Atlantis Okay yep. There's a name for that Right But then again He doesn't assume any of this He just says Everything is made by men not by aliens, but they were so advanced that they built the pyramids and only the stone structures survived after the Ice Age and it became what you see today. So, um, very interesting because, yeah. like I mentioned, topic of UFOs, the u- ufology has people who are into this topic and yep. they are claiming that aliens are the one that built the pyramids. Yeah, but you see, if you blend what he said mm. about you know the cataclysms that occurred a couple of times mm-hmm. um, on Earth, and then when we get wiped out and then we start again, you know, from the very bottom up, mm-hmm. right? And it keeps happening over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, but if you take a look at, at mainstream history, if we're going to work on that and not work on what Graham um, Hancock said, mm-hmm. then the time when we, from hunter-gatherer to having civilization and buildings and megaliths and all that, mm-hmm was so short. Yes, correct. Someone must have come along to plant a seed correct. into mankind's head. The right? In, yes, the injection of technology. Yeah. Yeah. This is the same thing that some ufologists has mentioned. Right. Up to eighteen hundreds, mm-hmm. mankind, mm-hmm. like all of us, huh? you know, ancient days of bullock cart sitting on a horse, mm-hmm. blah blah blah. And in this century suddenly we just have the iPhone. Yeah. So that is ridiculous, huh? Like Star Trek. Like Star Trek. I mean look, come on. It's it's too the jump is too far. Yeah, the iPad and iPhone, when I mean, you watch Star Trek, yeah. someone's got the idea from there. Yeah, correct. So the evolution of, of technology in mankind's history yeah. is very fast. It's yeah. too fast. So too that's quick, where yeah. too quick. So that's where they say they uh, backward engineer all these crash sources and came out. Yeah. Reverse like, engineering. Reverse engineering. Mm. Mm. So this is one of those uh again. There's no evidence to support anything, right? But it is one of those theories that they bring up, right? Yeah. So they got many schools of thoughts in these areas. Uh huh. Yeah. So uh, talking about uh, sometimes when you uh, when they when they watch when people see these kind of things, right? In, in let's say in America, right? They see some um, very uh, ph- uh, phenomenal sighting of a UFO uh-huh. or something that happened. Uh-huh. Uh huh. There's also another group of people that will appear at their door. They call themselves the Men in Black. <laughs> can we <laughs> can we put up that can we put that graphic up? Uh, that the <laughs> yes. There you go. Yeah. 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 Right. So this is called the man in black. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Right. That means they dress like 1950s kind of a trench coat uh-huh. with a hat. Uh-huh. They look strange. They come to you and say, "Nothing happened. You shall remain quiet, or your entire family will be killed." 
something like that you know <laughs> <laughs> or, or you know so they would just appear at the door they right, the, the door. drama in you drama man. I tell yeah. you so again this is very like I mentioned drama uh-huh. like you say drama so it's very drama please keep your mouth shut I'll take the gun and shove up do you know <laughs> <laughs> get and shove it up it's a probe up your ass yeah <laughs> but you know the Virginia story in Brazil I was talking about that crash yeah. right and you know like the three girls mm-hmm. that, that actually saw the alien yeah um, the next day you, uh, the mother was was being interviewed by James Fox right mm-hmm. and she actually said that uh, foreigners came foreigners as in she thought they were maybe Americans mm-hmm. because somebody else also said someone working in the airport that the U.S. Air Force landed there also mm-hmm. uh, and this mother of the three girls described the people that came to her house they were all dressed in black mm-hmm. Great. and they were trying to tell her this didn't happen yeah that's yeah. right Yeah, so that's why you let's have talk a little bit more about these guys, the Men in Black. Yeah, the Men in Black actually is very well uh, covered in the show, The X Files. If you have seen them and the movie and the movie, yeah, the multiple, yeah, movies, the multiple yeah. movies. Uh, mm. So, so um, they're they're not a new phenomenon. That means it came out because of the X Files. No, it was very old. That means if you go through some UFO books, mm-hmm. uh, text. Uh, 1940s, 1950s. They mm-hmm. have only written about these people. Mm-hmm. Uh, in brief, but they will come to warn them. They say government agents mm. who wear black. Mm-hmm. They never said men in black. Right. So then, along the black way, black suits, you mean? Black suits. Yeah. So they were very formally dressed, right? Right. So right. it's a form of a to the public that like, oh, this is a, must be a very important man coming to talk to me, not to talk about these things because he's wearing a suit, right? A black suit, right? right? That kind of thing. So I think it started from there, yeah. And then uh, slowly became easier to call MIB, men black, yeah, right. And they got Will Smith and all that. Yeah, <laughs> but then <laughs> make money, lah, you know. But then again, I mean, I've read in certain places that uh, some of them. Believe that some of the men in black who approach them are not human. Yes, there's a there's a theory behind that. Mm-hmm. Uh, this uh, there's this bigger theory. The theory why the Americans, wow, Americans again. Why yeah, the Americans, exactly, right? the yeah. British, the Russians, the Chinese, right? So called, they are all in league. All right, they well, know about this information about aliens and UFOs uh-huh. and all that, but they are not supposed to say and declare to the world. Uh-huh. Okay, now there's one school of thought that says because they are being threatened. They're bringing black milk. The human race is being black milk. We are here on Earth to do what we want to do. Uh-huh. We are to, to take people out, uh-huh. experiment on them, put them back. Uh-huh. They are safe. Uh-huh. We want to take your resources, but uh-huh. you just keep your mouth quiet. We let you run your countries. So that's one school of thought. Okay, yes. so so with that in mind, mm. my goodness, I uh, tell you, please try to follow this because yeah. it's going to get it's getting deeper. <laughs> um, the rabbit hole. Yeah, this this is going to be the rabbit hole, man. Yeah. So you saying that? Is there any truth in that treaty made between Eisenhower supposedly with the Greys? Okay, that one is again a hearsay. Okay, okay. now it it comes from from the word of mouth mm-hmm. of people who have who have already passed on, right. passed away. Right. So it all came come to this. Okay, for those listeners who are who who is Truman, huh? Who's who's Eisenhower? Who's and all? Now these are all American presidents. Former American presidents. Form, former American presidents. So what happened was that uh, this one of them started the CIA. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this, in this CIA, uh, there is basically a very big. Which one started the CIA? Truman. 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 Oh, did he yeah, start the CIA? I think so, he yeah. did, right? Yeah, he oh, okay. Did, yeah. uh, correct okay. me if I'm wrong, uh, in the mm-hmm. comments below. <laughs> <laughs> We're not Americans, so we we can yeah. we can definitely commit errors. Yes, yes definitely. You yeah. can correct us, please. Yeah, correct if you're us. American. Yes, yeah. correct. You might not be very happy because we've been dissing you guys from the from the get go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But most of the reports come from there. Uh-huh. So so therefore, uh, where where were we? We were. Uh, About uh, I mean the treaty, the treaty, the treaty. Yeah. So there's this theory that there was a treaty made, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, I don't know where, I don't know how the information came out, came about this. But uh, they are free to do whatever they want to do here. Okay. No, that's not what I heard. No? I heard that they were only allowed to abduct what five, two thousand or five thousand people. Yes. In a year, in a year, correct, and 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 cattle as well for cattle mutilation. Actually, what I heard from yeah. what what I read is was only cattle. Oh, yeah, they became humans, and then right. they can do what they want now. No, no. Eventually, <laughs> that they, the the Americans got quite angry. This way, I've been reading stuff. Yeah, got quite angry because they just you know did what they ever they wanted. They just took up as many people as they want. Yeah, you know, and there's not a thing that they can do that the Americans could do about. Yes, yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah, which links to the next branch of ufology. No, but do you believe in that, man? Do you believe that this is true? 
I think that could be a. Uh, I will try to use logic now. Yeah. Uh, I would call it a whistleblower. Oh okay, wow! Most of, most of the time, right? Yeah. As a human being, sometimes we it's very hard to just keep a secret. Yeah. Right. Unless you're really very righteous or you're standing your ground, you keep a secret. Okay. But if everybody knows the same thing and they all keep a secret, th- there's a problem somewhere. Yeah. That means it's not real. So this is this. Is, <laughs> no, so, so it's <laughs> no. I think it's not real. Or it could be that. Uh, Uh, <laughs> there was there's really a, a bigger thing behind. Uh-huh. There's a something more sinister than yeah. keeping it quiet. I mean, there, there's this thing also called Majestic Twelve. Yeah, Majestic Twelve is a document, actually. Yeah, uh, it was delivered to Stanton Friedman through a micro microfilm in an envelope. So Stanton Friedman is a guy that actually got that. Yeah, the, the, he was the guy that blew the whistle he on the whistle Majestic Twelve. Yeah, so when oh. he printed it out, there were names on it. And they were talking about this Roswell UFO crash, right? Yeah, and then the twelve names on it were all very big, uh-huh. big players in the American government and scientific uh-huh. world at that time. Right. No evidence left because all died. Right. So he went through a, a sort of a, a scientific research on the the way the letter was prepared. Right. The way the ty- the typeface or right. the typewriter. Right. And uh, it was very close to that period of time when they were alive. Right. Right. So and then even the up to the stem of the top secret for your eyes only kind of thing. Uh-huh. So he he went through that. So Majestic Job is a document that is still being uh, sort of uh, argued, debated in America uh-huh. or in the world, uh-huh. uh, whether it's real or right. whether it's fake. Right. Yeah. But there is no conclusion because right. uh, it is just a factual note, one off note that this meeting took place. Okay. And they were discussing about this. Okay. I got to hold. You, I got to hold you there for a minute, man. Um, People, but this is about as much time as we've got for part one of this episode. I mean, my goodness! If you're not following this, I, I, well, I don't blame you. Uh, but there's a lot for you to Google on, yeah. Lots of stuff for you to search on. But uh, this has been great, Bong. Um, I call him Bong, by the way. His name is Ignatius yeah, Bong. Bong. Uh, all of us who are affectionately, he's known as Bong. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes. So. Um, <laughs> Next, the next time when we come back again, we're going to continue recording right after we say goodbye for this episode, and then we're going to start shooting for the next. Okay. Um, what are we going to be talking about? Well, the next one, uh, I guess I'm going to talk about uh, about missing persons because okay. we're talking about missing persons. Uh, David Polidis and missing four one one okay cases. Uh, I will also be talking a, a bit about the. Uh, U.S. congressional hearing, mm. which we had recently okay. on the UFOs, right? And uh, basically, some of the cases that we have uh, not covered yet, mm-hmm. okay, like the Phoenix Lights, mm-hmm. uh, the Japan Japan Airlines flight, mm-hmm. okay, uh, these are all areas. And of course, we have another one called the Skinwalker Ranch. Wow, yeah, well, that's 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 the bomb. Uh, that's the bomb, right? Yeah, man. yeah, correct. And then uh, perhaps if we have we have time, then we talk about Solar Warden. Oh, uh, yeah. that's the bigger bomb, uh, man. Okay. <laughs> Okay, people. Thank you so very much for for watching this episode, uh, part one of this episode. We'll be back for the next one. Until then, make sure you clock your windows. But even then, if they're gonna abduct you, they will. <laughs> Check your ass the next day. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Mm.